Hello everyone and welcome to my talk. Uh, this year we're a little sad because we can't get to welcome everyone at the Vexos booth like we usually do and hand out swag, but we are happy that we're having this in a virtual way so everyone can stay safe and comfortable wherever you're from, whether you're at home or at the office or wherever you may be. And another reason why this is uh, it's great to do a virtual summit is because uh, a lot it's a lot more accessible so a lot more people can join that usually are not able to travel so we get to meet a lot more people from the community and it's always great uh, before we get started i just wanted to introduce myself a little bit uh, my name is hint nasser and i'm the business development director at vexhost in this talk we're going to be covering uh, before we start, just going to be a little intro about Vexos, just in case you're not familiar with us. And um, I wanted to talk about a few points that uh, everyone needs to know if you are uh, looking to embark on the OpenStack private cloud journey and you're looking to build a private cloud that is on-premise for yourself or your organization. And um, so these points will be developing a sustainable strategy, navigating the complexity of OpenStack, and understanding a little bit more about the capital expenditure that is associated with building a private cloud yourself. So the Vexos part. Um, so Vexos has been around since 2006, but when it comes to OpenStack, we have been around since it's almost its inception. Um, so in 2011, that's when we started uh, taking advantage of OpenStack uh, um, software for our infrastructure and um, back then OpenStack was running its second release which was bare and to give everyone context right now uh, OpenStack is on its 22nd release which is Victoria so if you do some math that's 20 releases um, which means that we've been around for quite a while it's nine years and uh, we've used these nine years to build a um, um, a few solutions around OpenStack, including our public cloud, which we have regions in North America, and we very recently announced our newest region in Europe, which we're super excited about. Um, we also have other solutions that are um, related to OpenStack, like OpenStack consulting and upgrades and, and uh, services and a lot more. Uh, and we also deploy private clouds that we have um, managed, either hosted or on-premise all over the world. So, uh, to get started, the, there's three main reasons, uh, not main reasons, but three uh, obstacles that a lot of companies have to make sure that they're aware of before they deploy, they deploy their own private cloud. Uh, the first one being is uh, developing a long-term sustainable strategy. So I'm sure you know this, but um, when you're building a private cloud, you're not looking to build something that is going to be used for a couple months or even a couple years. We're, you're looking for something that is very sustainable and something that you'll be able to use for many years to come. And um, when you're doing that, it means that there's a lot of decisions that you're going to be taking in the beginning that um, um, you need to make sure to keep uh, flexibility and that to keep in mind that things might change in the future. So. Um, a few items when we're thinking about um, developing something that is a lot more long term is making sure that you're able to scale up quickly and easily, um, making sure that you're able to expand to a lot more regions, making sure that you are um, able to use the hardware that you need to use today and tomorrow, and um, being able to add whatever more features and tools that your users might need. So when it comes to scaling up in for your private cloud, um, if we talk in the context of scaling up the number of nodes that you have running, you need to take into account that this is something that will require a lot of resources and sometimes a lot of time. So um, anything from purchasing the new hardware to deciding on the right vendors to installing the hardware and getting it set up and uh, making sure your OpenStack is scaling up to accommodate for this new hardware is something that is not quite easy and quite as straightforward. So depending on the nature of your industry or your company, um, if you do have workloads that do fluctuate or you do have uh, seasons or times where you are in need to scale up pretty quickly, um, it is something that might be, um, that you might wanna look into as early on as possible. Um, 
But we're also, we could be talking about expanding the cloud about more than nodes. It could be that we're talking about expanding it in terms of regions. And that, again, in the same con in the same way, could take quite a lot of time because we need to focus on um, figuring out the location of the data center and talking with the different vendors, getting the f hardware physically set up. And um, this could, again, take a lot of time and resources from your team, especially if infrastructure is not your business. You're trying to fulfill uh, your client's needs. You're trying to build something. You're trying to innovate and you don't want to be spending your um, days and weeks and months trying to figure out how can we come up with a second uh, or third or fourth region. And when, if we talk about hardware flexibility, so the ability to purchase flexible hardware, not flexible hardware, multiple um, hardware options is, is the easy part. So going to vendors and telling them this is what I need, that's, that's not difficult. But the hard part is making sure that you are um, able to implement all these different combinations within your cloud properly to, if the day comes where you need GPUs, you're able to implement that into your cloud. If you need multi-architecture, if you need to renew your hardware, um, you're able to make the right decisions uh, to make it efficiently and to make it productively. And another thing that you need to keep in mind pretty early on is uh, figuring out whether you need VMs, bare metal, Kubernetes, or all three. So um, you might be satisfied with Kubernetes uh, with you might be satisfied with Kubernetes today, uh, but you might be satisfied with virtual machines today, and that is what you need and there's nothing more, but there will be a time where you might want to explore into Kubernetes or explore bare metals because there is a need for that within your organization or within your users. And the last thing you want is to not be able to implement it into your cloud and having to have um, a different cloud that serves this one purpose of delivering Kubernetes or bare metal. And uh, if we now talk about overcoming the complexity of OpenStack itself. The first thing that we need to look at is in terms of designing and architecting. So this goes very hand in hand um, about developing a strategy that is long-term. So a lot of the decisions that are being made in this page are gonna be detrimental in making sure that the cloud is gonna be running the way you want it to um, for the future. So when we're talking about design and architecture stage, there's um, some of the things that you need to take into account from the start is, for example, the OpenStack, pro OpenStack project. So um, OpenStack itself has a very broad list of different projects that serve different, um, um, that have different purposes. And you need to start by understanding which are the core ones that you absolutely need, and then to take a look and see what are the ones that will accommodate the different needs that you have. If you do have any specific needs, um, understanding these projects are maintained to your expectation or if you need to invest some time in order to help maintain these projects and contribute back to the, to the community. Um, whether the projects that you're looking at are, how do they interact with other projects that you have or different softwares or different tools that you might already be using. So these are all questions that you need to decide on pretty, you need to decide pretty early on. Um, deciding things like the OpenStack distribution that you're gonna be using. Will you be running something that is upstream or will you be uh, using an OpenStack distribution from one of the vendors that have them available? Things like deployment tools, how will you deploy OpenStack and will this tool be used every time you need to scale up OpenStack and deploy other um, OpenStack clouds within your organization? Uh, deciding whether you want to do hyper-converge for your infrastructure, deciding on the different um, storage solutions, deciding even on the different instance types that you're gonna have in order to make sure that you are um, leveraging your hardware to its to its highest avail um, ability so that you don't have resources that are sitting idle, not doing anything and just costing you money. And so this is, these are all decisions to be made before we even start or while we start. Once OpenStack is deployed, unfortunately the hardest part is not behind us. Um, there is a lot of work involved 
in order to make sure that your OpenStack Cloud is running and running the way it should be. So the first thing that you need to look at is making sure that you have a monitoring system that you can trust. So um, making sure that things, everything from your network to your hardware to your infrastructure um, is being monitored at all time is crucial. Um, it's not enough to just have a monitoring system that alerts you when things go wrong. Um, you need to make sure that you have pre, um, proactive monitoring systems so that they can notify you before things go wrong and you have time to um, fix whatever needs to be fixed in order to not have any downtime. Once you have the monitoring set up, there's OpenStack upgrades. So these uh, mentioned earlier that um, there's few releases that happen that has happened since OpenStack has existed. So they happen every six months. Um, and with these releases, there is uh, new features and new bug fixes and um, even security patches. And it's there's a lot of good things in there that you need to have on your cloud. So just like any other upgrade, it's one of those things that the longer you take to do it, the harder it gets and the messier it gets. So you need to stay on top of it and make sure that it's something that you are able to do on a timely manner and that you are willing to invest um, the time and resources to get this done on a regular basis. And then we have just the regular everyday management in order to make sure that your cloud is running bug free, that you have no issues, that there's anything that needs to be optimized is being optimized and just keeping an eye out on things to make sure that everything is going smoothly. So. This is, in a nutshell, uh, a lot of the things that you need to be aware of um, that will require investments in either time or uh, monetary in some, reason, in some um, situations. I'm talking about monetary. Um, private clouds are, they do in involve a pretty significant capital expense at the start um, because of the way things are set up in a on-premise private cloud, you are responsible for your data center, for your hardware, and everything in between. So um, there's a big investment in the beginning um, to purchase all the hardware that is required um, that is required at the start. And the the issue with um, capital expenditure when it comes to a hosted private or sorry an on-premise private cloud is that it is unavoidable. Um, so because of that, um, if you are able to put that investment in, um, that's great and it means that this a hosted pri or an on-premise private cloud could be the right solution for you. Um, if a capital expenditure or any of the decisions that we discussed earlier seem like um, you're unable to fulfill them, it does not mean that you could not have a private cloud. Um, there are other solutions that you, could, can, yeah, that you could look into, like hosted private clouds. Um, and with basically what a hosted private cloud is, is it gives you the flexibility and security of a on-premise private cloud because you get to choose the location of your data center. You are in total control of the security of this private cloud. Um, but you do have the ease of use of a public cloud. So it's really as easy as logging into the dashboard and just being a user of your own private cloud while everything else is taken care of. Um, and even in terms of capital expenditures, there is not any, you turn it into an operational exper um, expenditure and um, you get to uh, pay it off on a monthly basis instead of putting everything up front. Um, so this is it for me. Um, if you do have any questions about uh, any of the slides, we do have a Q&A session happening right after. Um, before we do that, I just wanted to invite everyone to pass by the Vaxhost booth. We are giving away some, um, a lot of credits towards our public cloud. So all you have to do is just go there and scan your badge. And if not, you can just pass by and say hi. We have my teammates are there. They're great. Go say hi to them. Uh, I'll also be joining the live right after this. So I hope to see you there. And I'm um, looking forward to hearing any questions that you have, whether it's about our hosted private cloud or anything that I just spoke about. Thank you.